Hit it, Phil. Da, 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 da. Can it be the breeze that fills the trees with rare and magic perfume? Oh, no. <laughs> it isn't the breeze. It's Jackson time. La, da, da, da. Well, hello again. This is Buck Benny speaking. Uh, we are joined with our friends, John Henderson. Hey, John. Hey. Uh, from this day in Jack Benny. <laughs> and uh, as our podcast uh, that he that he does for that, it's wonderful. Um they, it's it's so interesting. I just posted an episode that we did, an old episode. It was, um, well, the debut of Jack's show because there's a new channel that we're starting to post shows to and, and it's the International Jack Benny Fan Club YouTube channel. Right. So I'm, I'm starting to appear, we're starting, our gang is appearing on like both channels now, my channel and that channel, and there'll be new content on both. So you might want to tune into to both new, of them. New and new and unheard content from previous, uh, like uh, from previous years, because there's some other stuff that Walden Hughes from YUSA is providing that. Oh yes, I had never heard, and I'm super excited for people to get to listen to. So That's, yeah, and so it's it's going to be a great <laughs> channel. I mean, there's going to be a lot going on. It's just coordinating all of us to when we're releasing things and so forth. I kind of jumped the gun and released something. Uh, early th th this week <laughs> and, and then everybody's like so when we unveil the channel and i'm like i already posted the channel <laughs> your unveiling is going to be I, so I, I, mine was kind of like a, a, a preview <laughs> yeah I, I looked at it and i'm just like oh sweet i guess we're ready to launch start sharing <laughs> it was great we, we it was great it though because i got to go back to that episode and just rewatch it on the channel so that was always fun that's fun for me whenever i just go like hey we've got a piece of content let's just start watching yeah. and get things rolling but we're I'm happy that we can talk some Jack and especially what you have prepared for us today. Cause this is, uh, I love watching Jack and George together. <laughs> oh, I know. Yes. Yeah. So we're continuing with our kind of mini series here of how Jack met so-and-so. So, -and -so. so mm -hmm. we've done how Jack met Mary, though. I don't think I've, I have it out there yet, but by the time you hear this show, probably will be out there. Uh, and we did how Jack uh, met Dennis or found Dennis. And this episode is how Jack found um, George Burns. And it was never done on his um, original radio show, but this is, because uh, so many of them were kind of done on the radio show and then brought across. This is one that they just did for television. Can you remind me of the date of this TV episode? Does anybody January 7th, 1964. Very Thank good. You. And, and you can tell it's from the 60s, by the way, that Jack Benny looks where he's got his suit with, I think, is that an ascot? Yes, I think yeah. so. Yeah. 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 So, no, it, it, I, I, it, this is a, a transition phase where he's, where he's heading into more of his older sort of persona piece that comes with that. But uh, I love it. And I love that, that when they do the flashback, all of a sudden he's got a whole lot more hair and, <laughs> and, it's, and it's bad hair, but it's great. So, so anyway, what, what they do with these shows is you end up with the beginning part being with uh, them currently as they appear, right? With, with George Burns and, and, and Jack. And then at some point in the show, they'll kind of remember back to what, uh, how they first met and that sort of thing. And that's where this goes back to. Um, it's a, it's a fun little bit. It's, it's a, not the greatest of these episodes, but just seeing these two together is so rewarding. Um, I just love their relationship. And from the moment that watch the very beginning as, as when, when they first get together and they first see each other on this episode, there's just that look, especially on George's part, like, we are the best friends on the planet and and because he had a hard time like not showing his admiration for jack just on his face and everything and and it's so different for george because because george sort of george's thing is kind of he's he's kind of cool and everybody else is not especially around jack that jack is not as cool as george and george is the cool friend out of the two but to just see his face light up coming on stage with Jack is just a treasure. And that just that moment is worth the entire episode in my, in my opinion. So, um, Kathy, you got anything else you want to share about, uh, are you come back to you? I'm coming back to her. She's, she's, she's reading something and <laughs> getting information. 
Oh, good. So, John, let's go over to you, John. What, uh, what do you think yeah. about George Burns, Jack Benny, and together? And yeah. Well, as we're starting to go through this uh, series of, like, how Jack met so-and-so, it's interesting to see how, in each episode, they portray the past differently. And mm -hmm. I feel like this is the one where they sort of try to make him look younger, whereas a lot of times they don't even bother. And I think yeah. it's so funny to, like, see him with the, the dark black hair and everything oh, like that. Oh, that. that toupee. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> It's it it moves in different directions that you can almost <laughs> think it's alive. Like everybody complains that Shatner's toupee is alive in places in yeah. some Star Trek movies. I'm like, no, 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 no. You haven't seen this episode of the Jack Benny program. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's funny is is we were talking uh, on the episode that is, uh, what if Jack had married Mary and, mm -hmm. and their daughters on there, and it's a sort of a fantasy episode, but for whatever reason in that episode for the entire episode they have a, a serious toupee on him and and it's very similar to this too it might even be the same toupee i'm not sure but it's like we were just all like floored by just jack looking so different and having so mm -hmm. much hair it was bad hair but it was there um and so we, we brought that up when we when we reviewed that episode and this is another one where you're gonna see him looking crazy with all the hair um i love the fact that in, in this episode at one point uh george throws his shoes at the wall to try and get <laughs> jack to stop playing music because jack is his neighbor and they haven't met yet and when he throws the shoes at the wall, the place is so cheap that the, the shoes go breaking through the wall and into Jack's room, <laughs> which, which is hilarious and great. And then they even top that because Jack brings the shoes back. And when he brings the shoes back, they're not, they're, they're Jack's shoes because they have holes in the bottom of them and he's trying to pass them off that these are the shoes you sent in and george is like these are my <laughs> shoes give me my shoes back and so then jack has to take them off his feet and i just thought that is such a great little bit and and so and something i'd never seen before and and some creative writing there but uh anyway but uh um let's go back to kathy since kathy's ready so kathy and you're muted kathy just so you know so <laughs> I'm better that way when I'm muted. I apologize for the, no, for the no. trees, trees that are being cut down in my front yard. Uh, but no, I was sort of intrigued by um, wh what this meant for this part of, of, of uh, George's career. Of what he'd had to, uh, he and Gracie had had to end the show, what, in the mid to late 50s? Yes. F late well, 50s, yeah. Of, she of, she uh, uh, retired in, I, in my dates might be wrong, but I think she retired in 58. Mm -hmm. then then he went on with the show without her that just became the george burns right. show but i think it only lasted a year or two years by 60 it was gone yeah right. and, and then he was so doing a, this... wasn't it wasn't it wendy and me right after this i can't remember right. yeah. so he, he tried that and yep. but um it's and so she passed here. in 62 yeah. so this is two years after her passing oh. so this would be early i, I think i think she oh. passed in 62 just... w no wikipedia yeah Says that Press that over me, believe me. <laughs> August 27th, 1964. Oh, so just wow. six wow. months after this. Mm -hmm. So, so she hasn't passed yet. She hasn't passed. Episode. Laura claims that it might be her own, you know, that it's her own voice. Whether it was something from a recording or whether she could still, um, you know, be able to uh, record those lines off screen. But as I said, I, um, I feel sort of bad for George. Uh, uh, because he's um, uh, he wants to keep on with his career, but his whole career had been tied up so much with Gracie. Yeah. How lovely that he gets to uh, honor her uh, 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 this way with the end of the skit where he's found a new partner and 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 Jack. No. So yeah. Um, well, and we all know the of, the famous yeah. line that 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 he s says so often, and it's such a beautiful tribute is. I, I only had one joke and then she died um, yeah. was was such a uh, honoring her because he was he was a great performer before he ever uh, found Gracie and they just created this perfect act together. But after she was gone, he was still this brilliant performer. He just needed time for us to realize it again. And I think Jack did such a good job of trying to help him as a friend by having him appear on his show, but also in Jack's, right before Jack's passing, of passing the torch to George to be in The Sunshine Boys, 
mm-hmm. which completely revitalized George's career and had him been in the Oh God movies and so forth and, and uh, had him where it just took him to a whole nother level. Yeah. Uh, so it was lovely that that friendship could be Jack's final act was sort of, here's George, enjoy George as much as I do because I don't get to enjoy him anymore. So you guys can enjoy him. And, and It's like the last bastion of Jack saying, here's another one of the supporting characters in my life and how they're funnier than me. Yeah. And here's, and here's what we have from that. And considering there's two things that I consider in this episode, Buck, when it comes to George in particular is like one, the Gracie bit, like I'm, I, I, we know the story of how he met Gracie. I like this version of the story better than the actual story of the idea <laughs> that he just cannot stand working with Jack. It's a great like origin story, but also um, in a way, it's kind of like watching a prequel to the Sunshine Boys. Not like not in specifics because they're not hitting on Smith and Dale per se, but you get but but you yes. get the you get the bickering, and it's yes. like it's a it's a good evidence point of like this is why George was good for Al Lewis. And in a way, it almost kind of counter counteracts the thoughts of, well, Jack would have crushed it in the Sunshine Boys as Al, because I, I found this d- debate over the last year whether or not he would have worked in that role, and I still would want to see it. But, like, it's it's a clear piece of evidence of, like, no, George would have crushed Al Lewis even 10 years prior. Um But, and it's, and also it's, it, it, the, the, the detail of that flop house <laughs> is... It's it's scary. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You know, for for Jack Benny, who started on the radio, it's amazing how t- so many of the visual jokes work. I was sitting by my wife watching it, and I had headphones, and she couldn't hear it. And she looked over, and she sees the Murphy bed come down, and the guy sit yeah. up, and she burst out laughing. <laughs> it, so it just still works. You know, this this episode, I feel, is so close to becoming one of the great episodes. I do feel it's sort of lags a little bit in the middle there with Jack and George doing the vaudeville routine and maybe it's because I have no experience with vaudeville and it doesn't really mean anything to me and it doesn't really work and sort of the joke is that it's not working right but I do feel like the fact that they go back to Gracie and she's doing the same bit of I feel like it's obviously an old bit that they you know had done together back then yeah. and the fact that you hear it and you you just heard the jokes five times and now you're laughing because the way that she does it and the way they work together is so funny. And then with Jack sort of commenting on it at the same time, I think it's a great ending to the episode. Yes. It's, like, it's like the inverse of whenever they do the Fred Allen um, on the radio show, the Fred Allen and him being in vaudeville together and going to the agent and um, uh, d- doing a, a sna- violin and snappy patter. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, like that. It's the inverse of that, or even Goldie Fields and Glide, where it's like Goldie Fields and Glide is entertaining, it's cute, and it's tongue in cheek. And this one is actively designed to be bad to basically tell George Burns's. In a lot of ways, it is George's origin story, but it's not. Right. Obviously, it's it's he was trying different things. The only thing they don't show, which would have been interesting, I don't know if they've ever done this on the George and Gracie TV show, of the fact that George tried the uh the the funny lines and wasn't getting any re- results so that's when he switched it and gave gracie the funny lines and then that's when comedy history was made like this is like the closest you get to that really is jack being <laughs> yes. short, short of actually dressing up like gracie which yeah which he does but, <laughs> yeah <laughs> on a different episode we've talked about yeah, yeah. oh that's it's a great episode well well but um uh uh George and Jack had done that Gracie thing. They did it for almost 10 years uh, of privately because when they first started it in the mid 50s, it was very outre uh, of the, the reaction. It got Jack in Confidential Magazine. Might he like dressing as a woman? Um, and, and they continued it through the, the 60s. They would do it live uh, for um, uh, theatrical benefits and other kind of friars frolics and things like that. So, yeah. Um, Well, the thing that I love about this episode more than anything else is the fact that you can tell, and you mentioned it, that Jack Benny and George Burns are really friends in real Mm -hmm. life. And you can tell by the way that they're interacting Mm -hmm. and the looks on their faces that you can't fake. And I really believe the bit at the end, you know, when the curtain comes back and they talk about, and Jack talks about how George would play tricks on him. 
you know, and the examples that they gave, I'm sure that's a real life example mm -hmm. of something that really happened. Yes, I think so too. And, and Jack gets a lot into that in his, uh, in his Sunday nights at seven. Um, so it's fun to read uh, that about the George Burns interactions. And actually all the Benny books that are out there go into their friendship and so tell different little anecdotes from, from their, their lives together. And they're all so good. And they're all, uh, the bottom line with almost all of them is sort of George was funny, but he wasn't as funny as Jack makes him out to be because a lot of the time it would simply be that he'd be picking off lint off of Jack and Jack would fall on the floor laughing and everybody else would be like, what is he laughing at? You know, and, and, uh, but it, they were just so in tune to each other. And, uh, what, a, what, a, for, for a comedy guy like George Burns, what a great thing to have this, this built in audience of your best yeah. friend that just thinks everything you do is absolutely the funniest yeah. thing on the planet. So, yeah. Even oh, even I, he acknowledged he, like the whole comedian's comedian thing. He acknowledged that it's just like yeah, it's it's, it's I don't I don't understand exactly how all of it worked because literally he'd fall down on the floor for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> he even acknowledged he's like I don't know. Uh, hey, let's set up a joke real quick that you might not get if you're not you know into old Hollywood. Yeah. Zach, can you tell us who Daryl F. Zanuck was? He was the head of 20th Century Fox for quite some time before, before that he was a story guy at Warner Brothers, one of the chief story guys at Warner Brothers. Um, so, but yeah, no, Zanuck is. He's a big wig movie guy. Legendary, yeah, big wig movie guy. He is yeah. With, with a great name, Daryl left Zanuck. Uh, <laughs> well, we all know Daryl is just such a great name. Uh, boy, anybody with that name is special. So, yeah, uh, yeah, just just don't uh, just don't walk around in a uh, military uniform and botch a b botch one of your war documentaries and create a snafu in the press and you'll be fine. <laughs> 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 Sorry for that very specific thing that you yes. must not do in order to succeed. <laughs> but <laughs> but John, what was your what, what was your uh, did you have more of your point that you were going to make? No, that's a, that's a setup. And when you watch the episode. Then you'll, know. Make more sense. Yeah. You'll, get, you'll get the payoff. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the episode. So enjoy this, um, these two friends together. Um, what, what a treat it is to, whenever they're together. And, and this is one of those treats. And I'm so glad that they did appear together so often. So we'll see all of you folks next time and enjoy. Bye. From Hollywood. The Jack Benny Program. With Jack's special guest, George Burns. So long, Rochester. See you soon. <laughs> now, Jack. Jack. Jack, we've got to get on with rehearsal. Jack, what are you doing? We haven't finished rehearsal yet. I'm going to play golf. I got a date with George Burns. <laughs> Jack, which is more important? Your show are playing golf with George Burns. Playing golf with George Burns. That's good. <laughs> We've been friends for years. And you know, there's an old saying, you can't buy friendship. Well, that ought to make you happy. <laughs> that ought to make you happy. Let's see if I got everything here. Gloves, balls, tees. Let's see it there. The scorecard. There's a pencil. An eraser. <laughs> Jack, look, I still say you got a lot of nerve leaving before we finish rehearsal. Look, I'm not going to let my pal George Burns down. <laughs> Let's see, there are my woods, my iron, my putter. Oh, there's my shotgun. <laughs> shotgun? Yeah. The way I've been playing lately, you know, I run into some pretty big games. Come <laughs> on, Dan. Hello, Jack Benny's office. Uh, well, I'm sorry he isn't in just now. May I take a message? Oh, magazines. Well, no, he already subscribes to that one. He subscribes to that one, too. He also subscribes to that one. Uh, no, that one he sells. <laughs> in fact, last month he won a bicycle. <laughs> Hello?
Hello, Jack Benny's office. Oh, hello, Mr. Zanuck. Well, he isn't here just now. Uh, no, he's out playing golf, and I'm afraid he won't be back for a couple of hours. Well, I'll tell him when he comes in. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Benny, you're back early. You're darn right I'm back early. And this is the last time I ever play golf with George Burns. <laughs> well, I don't want to discuss it now. Were there any messages for me? Yes, and Mr. Zanuck called. Daryl Zanuck? Gee, what did he want? He didn't get his magazine this month. <laughs> Why so impatient? See, the, the calendar girl this month is nothing. You certainly are in a bad mood. Well, it's that golf game of mine. But, Mr. Benny, golf is a sport. You're supposed to go out on the course for fun, relaxation. Not when you're playing for money. <laughs> I can't get over that, George Burns. He makes me so mad. Well, why don't you forget about your golf game? Maybe you'd feel better if you answered your fan mail. Okay. There's a letter here from a lady from Baltimore. She says, Dear Mr. Benny, I've admired you for many years, and I would like an autographed picture of you. Please sign it, Blue Eyes. <laughs> All right, Blue Eyes. Love Blue Eyes. All right. Now, Mr. Benny, if you'll just sign these contracts. What about the, my fan mail? This was it. <laughs> well, that certainly made me feel good. Look, at, hold the contracts till tomorrow, and then we'll go over them. All right. Four. <laughs> George. Jay, you still mad? I wasn't mad. And what are you doing here? You forgot your golf club. <laughs> All right, all right, so I was mad. Look, don't be so upset. You've, uh, you've lost before. I don't care about losing. It's just that you're such a poor sport. <laughs> Look, Miss Gordon, you know what he did? Here we are on the third green. I swear, I'm this close to the hole. This close. And he wouldn't concede the putt. Anybody would have conceded that putt. All right, so I didn't concede the putt. So what? So it cost me four more strokes. <laughs> I'll tell you something right to your face, George. You, you spoiled my whole day. <laughs> Look, Jack, you're no pleasure to play with either. I was plenty embarrassed when you got into that big argument with the man on the other fairway about whose ball it was. It was my ball. He said it was his ball. I said it was mine, and you had no reason to agree with him. I had to. Father Donovan is an honest man. <laughs> All right, so I, so I made a mistake. I mean, but you're, you're getting so technical lately. I mean, on the fifth hole, you penalize me two strokes. You're not supposed to tee up the ball in the middle of the fairway. <laughs> I didn't tee up the ball. Jack, that rubber mushroom that you carry around doesn't fool anybody. <laughs> I don't know. I was never so insulted in all my life. And I'll tell you something, George. I'll never talk to you again as long as I live. Miss Gordon, I'll see you in the morning. If that's the way you feel, you can cancel my magazine. <laughs> this has nothing to do with business. <laughs> I knew that would bring him back. Oh, gosh, I've never seen him so mad. Yeah, he'll get over it. Oh, I guess you're right. You and Mr. Benny have been friends for so many years. We've been friends for over 40 years. Oh, I forgot he tells everybody he's 39. I met him when he was 39. <laughs> oh, tell me, Mr. Burns, I've always been curious. How did you first meet Mr. Benny? Well, that's many years ago. I was in Chicago, and my partner, Billy Lorraine, quit the act. And things were kind of rough. And I remember I just had enough money to stop in this little boarding house that catered to theatrical people. <laughs> Hi, 
right, it ain't the Waldorf, but then you ain't the Prince of Wales. I look more like the Prince of Wales than this looks like the Waldorf. <laughs> for the rug. You missed it. What are you, Weisenheimer? <laughs> this is the closet. And this is the bed. You pull it down this way. What about a bath? I certainly would advise it. <laughs> you ought to be a show business. You're funny. <laughs> well, do you want the room or don't you? I'll take it. How much is it? Three dollars a week in advance. In advance? Why? Because the guy who had the room last time disappeared and didn't pay his rent. <laughs> okay, okay. What's, what's that? Oh, that's the guy who lives next door. Three dollars? Two fifty. <laughs> dollar seventy-five. Okay, I'll give you a dollar seventy-five, but I want the cooking privileges like he's got. What makes you think he's got cooking privileges? Isn't he plucking a chicken? <laughs> I see what you mean. Here's your money. Oh, incidentally, I have a very cute daughter, and she wants to get into show business. All landladies have daughters that want to get into show business. <laughs> I was going to change it, but it dried. <laughs> Not, you, not she's accused. very attractive. Uh, <laughs> she's right. This ain't the Waldorf. Use a little air. Oh. Sure build close in this city. On a clear day, you can see the cement between the bricks. <laughs> Quiet. Quiet. Shoes? Yeah, thanks a lot, fella, for bringing them back. I, I really didn't mean to. These aren't my shoes. Well, you, you can't blame me for trying. <laughs> Say, what, what happened to that other fella that used to live here that, that had this room before, Mr. Thromberry? That's what the landlady would like to know. She said he disappeared without paying his rent. Oh. Well, I, uh, say, I've seen you on the, on the stage. Aren't you George Burns? I'm not the Prince of Wales. <laughs> I thought so. Gosh, you've got a, you got a nicer room than mine. It only looks that way because the towel is dry. <laughs> no. Say, uh, I'm, I'm Jack Benny. I'm in show business, too, you know. Oh? Yes, I, I'm a musician. I guess you heard. I heard. What instrument do you play? I don't think everybody asks me that. Well, anyway, I'm, I'm sure glad you're going to be a neighbor of mine. Well, I'm sorry about throwing my shoes at you. I'm a little irritable today. You see, my partner, Billy Lorraine, quit the act, and we're supposed to open tomorrow night at the Bijou Burlesque Theater. And, 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 uh, how would you like to be in burlesque? Burlesque? Yeah. Gee, if my father ever saw me do a fan dance, he'd beat the tar out of me. <laughs> well, I mean comedy. My partner quit. Maybe you can take his place. Well, I don't know anything about comedy. You see, I just play the violin. Well, stick with me and I'll teach you. Gee, would you? Of course. We'll rehearse all day tomorrow. We'll open tomorrow night. And right now, I'd like to get some sleep. Will you help me pull down the bed? Oh, sure. <laughs> Mr. Thromberry, another half hour and I would have suffocated. The lady thought you were gone. Yeah, I will be in a minute. Listen, take my advice. You two sleep together. 
The spring in this bed is murder. <laughs> Did you and Mr. Benny really do an act together? Oh, yes. Early the next morning, we got to work, and we rehearsed all day. And that night, we made our first appearance as a team at the Bijou Burlesque Theater. Make me lose those Yankee Doodle. You, you can, can have, have my go on them Yankee Doodle Blues. What do you have home? Well, I got a letter from my niece, Jean. Oh, how is she? Oh, she's fine. You know, she told me now that it's spring again. See, they're, they're putting a little circus in the backyard like we used to do when we were kids. Oh. You see? And my, uh, my uncle, Otis, he was always the strong man, see? So he, he used to come out in a leopard skin and put some nails in his mouth and twist them around his teeth until they'd bend. That's, uh, <laughs> that's quite a trick. Yeah, but he looked pretty ridiculous walking around with a lot of bent teeth. <laughs> well, they'd, uh, they'd come in handy if he happened to get a crooked ear of corn. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, um, uh, my, you know, my aunt, Aunt Gertrude, she was a snake charmer. Gertrude? The one who's so nearsighted? Yeah, you see, she used to take a little snake and put it in a basket. Yeah. See? And then a blow on a flute until the snake's head came up. I see. And uh, what do you think happened uh, one Saturday? She put the flute in the basket and blew on the snake. No, 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 George, it, it, it wasn't a real snake. It was just a few worms tied together. Oh, I see. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. We got the hook, but we had to stay in show business. We had a hundred cards printed, Burns and Benny, but we didn't give up. Two nights later, we did the act in Schenectady. <laughs> oh, it wasn't a real snake. It was just a few worms tied together. Uh, what, was, um, what was your part in the circus? I was a line tamer. You were a line tamer? Yeah, but I used to use our house cat. Oh? You see? And I taught her all kinds of tricks. How to get up on a pedestal and roll over and, and, and play dead. That's a pretty smart cat. Yeah, but, but, but when it came in front of an audience, she forgot all her tricks, and all she did was have kittens. <laughs> After that, we had to lay off for a few days. Jack got a rash. Who knew he was allergic to tomatoes? <laughs> But I still had faith in the act. I figured they'd love us in Altoona. And he'd twist them between his teeth until they bent. That's, uh, that's quite a trick. I know, but he looked pretty ridiculous walking around with a mouth full of bent teeth. <laughs> we caught an early train for our next stop. Gloversville. <laughs> that was quite a trick. Yeah, but he looked pretty ridiculous walking around with a mouth full of... <laughs> they didn't even wait for the punchline. <laughs> We thought we figured out what was wrong with the act. We were much too sophisticated. But we changed that when we opened in Ronkonkoma. You say your Uncle Otis was a strong man? <laughs> you say your Uncle Otis was the strong man? Yeah, he used to come out in a leopard skin and put some big nails in his mouth and twisted them in his teeth until they bent. That's quite a trick. Yeah, but he looked ridiculous walking around with a mouth full of bent teeth. <laughs> later, downhearted, we arrived back in Chicago. Uh, 
All right, I know it ain't the Waldorf, but then again, you ain't Calvin Coolidge. <laughs> Even the landlady had sense enough to change her act. <laughs> oh, um, incidentally, uh, since you went away, my daughter's been studying, and she's gotten real good. <laughs> Maybe you could get her into show business. <laughs> I'll talk to you about that later. Now, what was I rating in? Three dollars for a single. There you are. No company in the rooms. And if you're going to have company, you got to keep this door open. I'll keep and it don't open. forget to turn off I'll all turn those lights. And I don't want any rattling on the uh, radiators goodbye. because I can't My stand the noise. I've got nice people living here. Goodbye. <laughs> silliest thing I've ever heard of. <laughs> Stop complaining. We take turns, don't we? I know, but when you were in the trunk, they didn't throw it off the top of the bus. <laughs> Jack, I'm too tired to argue with you. I'd like, I'd like to take a little sleep before we go to the theater. Will you help me pull down the bed? Yes. And any there we are. Thank heaven somebody came. <laughs> Where in the world have you been? Jack, while I'm taking a nap, you better rehearse the act. This is very important tonight. We're getting we're getting thirty-five dollars. Twenty for me and fifteen for you. Now wait a minute, George. There's something I want to talk to you about. I'm just as good at the act as you are now, and we're going to split it right down the middle. Well, that's gratitude for you. I take you from nowhere, put you into a great act, now you want to split the money. Well, that, that's the only way I'll go on. I got news for you. I don't need you. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, no, I don't. I can do this act with anybody. I can even do it with the landlady's daughter and get as many laughs. Oh, yeah, that I'd like to see. All right, you will. <laughs> Mrs. Landlady! Landlady's daughter. He'll be begging me to come back. When he does, I'm going to get more than half, believe me. Where's George Burns? He's on stage there, working with a girl. With a girl, eh? It must be some act. The landlady's daughter. <laughs> this I gotta see. You mean to say your uncle put nails between his teeth and twisted them until they bend? That's quite a trick. Yeah, but he looked pretty ridiculous walking around with all those bent teeth. <laughs> well, Gracie. They'd come in handy if you happen to get a crooked ear of corn. Gracie. Gracie. Oh, what a name. Oh, well, you'll live and learn. That's the only Gertrude, she was the snake charmer. Gertrude? Yeah. I did that same joke. Uh-huh. She had a little snake, mm -hmm. and she was supposed to put it in the basket and then uh, blow on a flute until the snake stuck That's my head. joke, and the same joke I did with it. one Saturday afternoon. And I was she even dressed for in the basket and blew on the snake. Wasn't that all? <laughs> well, I'll bet it upset her. Well, no, well, it wasn't a real snake. It was just a few little worms tied together. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's really better. Uh, who, uh, who else was in the sideshow? Well, the big hit was my Aunt Clara and Uncle Harvey. What kind of an act did they do? If you know of anybody who wants to take violin lessons, Here's my card. <laughs> we'll be back with a special guest, George Burns, in just a moment. But first... <clears throat> thank you, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you all enjoyed the show. Now, whether you believe this story or not, you, I'm sure that most of you know that George Burns and I have been friends for many, many years. As a matter of fact, he's the closest friend that I have in the whole world. But you've probably also heard about the awful things that he does to me. He can think up some of the 
dirtiest tricks to do to me. I, I could tell you a hundred of them, but... I, well, I must tell you one that he did only a couple of weeks ago. You won't believe this, but it's a true story. I hadn't seen him. I hadn't seen George in about three months. He was out on tour with a show. And I missed him, you know. Well, anyway, he got back in town, hadn't called me yet, and I was walking down Sunset Boulevard, and suddenly I see him driving down in his car. And he saw me. So he pulled over the curb across the street, you see, and he waved for me to come over. Well, I couldn't wait to see him. And I dashed across the street through all the traffic and everything, and as soon as I got to his car, he rolled up the window and drove away. <laughs> show you what kind of a sap I am. That's the third time he's done that to me. <laughs> George, come on out here, will you? Uh, George, tell me, did you enjoy being on the show? No. <laughs> Why not? You got a lot of laughs. I'm not interested in laughs, Jack. I like to sing. <laughs> but this is a comedy show. That doesn't interest me, Jack. I love to sing. <laughs> well, George, look at As a comedian on my show, I'm certainly willing to pay you. But if you want to sing, you get nothing. <laughs> We're down in Africa every evening in the bamboo trees. Some chimpanzees, monkey banjos, nightly would be strumming. They would be humming in his voice, then buzzing. Oh, good night, folks. Good night, George. Hey, the band was the best. George, good night. Good night, George. Good night, George. This big band. Good night, folks. I'll be seeing you soon. One night in June. Don't go to see the monkey and fall asleep. The monkey and the monkey and the monkey and the monkey. Yeah, no, I think the, the other one that was just posted was the 60 piece was a 60 piece orchestra yes. um, uh, piece, which Laura put up. Um, and so that 60 piece orchestra episode. I'd never seen before. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't run into many Jack Benny television shows that I haven't seen. So when that was there, I was like, wait a minute. And then it was funny because it's listed as uh, whoever it was Laura that posted it. Anyway, whoever mm -hmm. posted it listed it as season five of episode three and i'm like this is not season five episode three and i double checked it and i was like no no it's it's season three episode five so they just got it reversed because i was going the, the 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 opening is completely wrong for the time frame and everything so um but i put in the comments i said oh that's what it is but but man it's lovely to, to get a new episode of the jack benny show whenever i can that i've never seen before um, mm -hmm. It's not the most spectacular episode I've ever seen, but it's uh, any Jack is good Jack. So but even um, even the weakest Benny is better than most television shows will ever be. So I, that's true. I, I, I will it. agree with that. Um, anyway, the, the so on that channel anyway, I posted, and someone said, "Oh, is that John Henderson in the corner?" And and I'm like, <laughs> is that John Henderson in the corner. Go, oh, he interviewed my daughter when she was 11, like five years ago or something uh -huh. and to see john again or something do you even do you know who i would even be talking about john from that uh yeah it must be like i th i think i interviewed a a young fan of the jack benny show and oh. he he had his like he went for i think halloween or something and he was dressed as jack benny with the glasses and the violin and stuff okay. like that 
So oh, that yeah, must have been the one. So, yeah. so yeah, I, I said that you're you're up here with us all the time, and so make sure you tune in and whatever. And so that was just cute that someone like recognized you in the sitting there in the corner and like, like yeah. Wait a minute, like Daryl, I don't mean to cause any alarm, but from my viewpoint, is that John Henderson in the lower corner right there? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, John, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> uh, speaking, of, I I don't know if we introduced uh, Zach. Yeah. Uh, or Kathy, so we should probably introduce uh, <laughs> them they... as well, <laughs> so we know who we're talking to. <laughs> well, no one mentioned them, so... <laughs> I'm John Henderson They're Jr. not the famous John Henderson. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have Kathy fuller Sealy with us, and, and Kathy does all the, the wonderful Jack Benny books that are out there, and, and tune into her books, and and uh, we've, we've just uh, released uh, the first half of, of the interview with Kathy that's gone over really big and people love it. And I had so many people, which is wonderful, saying, oh, I, I heard the interview, loved it, and I went and got the book and everything. So so your sales of your book are just going to skyrocket. Oh, they're doubling. That's I excellent. think you've at least sold two so this much. week. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but uh, and then we're going to have part two coming up this week of the interview where we talk about her two most recent books, which are the Jack Benny script books mm. with the lost scripts. And I, I, and I love that interview. I mean... Um, so I can't wait to present that. And then we have our friend Zach here. Uh, Zach, you're from Ballyhoo, Woo Woo, Kalamazoo. I don't know. Go ahead. It, it's sk it, it's Skidoo, a podcast de dedicated <laughs> to every microsecond of the movie Skidoo, which nobody remembers. So we'll <laughs> end in about 40 years. Um, no, um, yeah, no. Yesterday, you're Ballyhoo Review. Uh, it's a film show that uh, mainly film, but also radio. A podcast that deconstructs golden age Hollywood and radio with uh, historical context in mind, but also having some laughs um, for Benny fans. Um, right now, the current episode that is up is about the horn blows at midnight. Yeah. Uh, so you're uh, you're in for quite a treat because the production of that film is even crazier than the film itself at times. So, uh, and uh, and the next one coming up will be Disney in the '40s during their uh, dry spell when experiments oh, were yeah. failing and package features were in bloom. Uh, oh. And have you uh, already so recorded that one? We have, but we're gonna. I want to. I want to break you it down. You should add me on there, man. I tell you, uh, I got so much to say about those shows. Those are great. I left room for more discussions on that to happen because we kind of, we packed over seven films into a three hour discussion. Um, and it was mainly about like, how does a studio go from one point of success to having to find things to hold until they get to something like Cinderella, because it's, it's a big swath where yeah. Disney is surviving. Cause what um, is that? 40, we're talking 40 to about 49, like yeah. 40 to 49, because Bambi and Fantasia and Pinocchio don't perform as well as Snow White and Dumbo's successes and uh, Time Magazine article are undercut by Pearl Harbor. So like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things where Disney's looking at his life going like, am I doing it correctly? What, what, what happened? And then you have the cartoonist strike, which obviously adds a little bit more intrigue to the story but but look for that soon but um i 